News Today. What is Peter Pan Syndrome? By Kendra Kabbalah. Peter Pan Syndrome is a popular psychology term describing young adults, particularly males, who cannot seem to grow up. Dr. Dan Kiley coined the term in his 1983 book, The Peter Pan Syndrome, Men Who Have Never Grown Up. A year later, he published The Wendy Dilemma, outlining the difficulties of young females in relationships with Peter Pans. People with characteristics of Peter Pan syndrome may refuse to adopt adult responsibilities, have difficulty maintaining healthy relationships, and have a fond nostalgia for their youth. While most people may long for the simplicity of childhood from time to time, people with Peter Pan syndrome can have difficulty living a typical adult life. Read more to learn about the traits of Peter Pan syndrome, possible causes, how it affects relationships, and more. What is Peter Pan syndrome? Peter Pan syndrome is not a formal diagnosis and does not have recognition by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, or the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 5th edition, text revision, DSM-5-TR. Rather, it is an informal term that some psychologists use. Peter Pan syndrome describes people who have difficulty growing up. They may find it hard to manage typical adult responsibilities such as keeping a job and maintaining healthy relationships. According to Kylie, people with Peter Pan syndrome behave irresponsibly and may display narcissistic personality traits. This, he says, makes it challenging for them to have functional social, professional, and romantic relationships. He states that because people with Peter Pan syndrome refuse to accept responsibility, they tend to blame others for problems. They also have difficulty expressing their emotions which contributes to their issue with maintaining relationships. Traits and Characteristics As Peter Pan syndrome is not a formal diagnosis, there is no distinct criteria defining the condition. However, some commonly mentioned signs include difficulty with responsibilities and commitment, issues with work and career interests, being vain and self-centered, fear of loneliness, difficulty controlling impulsive behavior, Reliance on others. Avoidance of criticism. A key characteristic of Peter Pan syndrome is having difficulty with personal and romantic relationships. Some people frequently change partners, often seeking less mature ones, and ending relationships once a higher level of commitment is required. In his 1997 book, Men Who Never Grow Up, Kylie listed seven key markers of Peter Pan syndrome. They include emotional paralysis. People may have dulled emotions or express their feelings in inappropriate ways. Slowness. They may be apathetic, procrastinate tasks, and frequently late. Social challenges. They may feel anxious and have difficulty forming meaningful friendships. Avoidance of responsibility. People often avoid taking accountability for their mistakes and may blame others. Female relationships. According to Kylie, people can have difficulty with maternal relationships and treat future romantic partners as mother figures. Male relationships. They may feel distant from their father and have trouble with male authority figures. Sexual relationships. They may be afraid of rejection from romantic partners and desire a partner who is dependent on them. It is clear that Kylie bases many of the criteria on outdated, patriarchal ideas of gender and sexuality, so they are not often reflected in a modern view of Peter Pan syndrome. While earlier texts stated that the syndrome only affected males, these characteristics can affect anyone, regardless of sex or gender. Causes. There is little research on Peter Pan syndrome, so psychologists do not exactly know what causes the syndrome's behaviors. Some experts posit that having overprotective parents can make a person more likely to develop it. The rationale behind this explains that when children are sheltered and overprotected, they do not develop the skills they need to deal with the challenges of real life. When they grow into adulthood, they may expect the same safe, privileged environment of childhood. According to Kylie, the seeds of Peter Pan syndrome become sown in childhood. Symptoms may start to appear around 11 to 12 years of age, and as the child moves into adolescence, they become more prevalent. Relationships One of the main issues of people with Peter Pan syndrome is maintaining healthy romantic relationships. They may have difficulty expressing their emotions, 
listening to their partner, and playing an equal role in the relationship. Additionally, they may place an unfair burden on their partner. In line with Kylie's idea that Peter Pan syndrome only affected males, he released a companion book in 1983 titled The Wendy Dilemma. Although this book relies on gendered stereotypes, the theory behind it can apply to any person who is a romantic partner of a Peter Pan. The book's premise hinges on the fact that Wendy is the supporting partner behind a Peter Pan. As they are disinterested or believe others should take care of adult responsibilities such as decision making, bill paying, meal preparation, and more, the Wendy and the relationship must pick up the slack. Some people who fall into these roles may not even realize they are doing so. This can cause significant relationship issues and negatively affect both partners. Based on an individual's past experiences and personalities, some may be more likely to find themselves enabling unhealthy, unbalanced behavior in relationships. Difficulties of growing up. Many characteristics of Peter Pan syndrome, such as lack of interest in work, refusal to maintain adult responsibilities, and issues communicating in relationships, may sound remarkably familiar to some young adults. Many have experienced these before, and more than ever, young people may find it challenging to move into adulthood. This asks the question, is it Peter Pan or something else entirely? Becoming an adult is not something that happens overnight. It is a gradual process that happens over months and years. Historically, key markers of adulthood included factors such as marriage, home ownership, and parenthood. When people reached these milestones, they were automatically forced to take on a new level of responsibility, and the discrete markers enforce stability that define them as adults. However, the current generation of young adults is experiencing a vastly different socioeconomic landscape trusted source, which means many people push these milestones further and further away. As the average age for marriage and first-time parenthood has increased, and home ownership is becoming increasingly unattainable, many young people may feel as if they have not truly grown up. It is important to know that adulthood happens with or without these milestones, even though it may be difficult to see adult life as something different than past generations. Experiencing uncomfortable feelings as one enters young adulthood is natural. Most people have difficulty with the responsibilities of adulting, and nearly everyone occasionally longs for the simplicity of childhood. However, if a person consistently finds it challenging to maintain healthy relationships and adult responsibilities, it may be a good idea to contact a mental health professional. Summary Peter Pan syndrome is a popular psychology term to describe people who find it difficult to grow up. They often have challenges managing adult responsibilities and maintaining adult relationships. Having difficulty with adult responsibilities can affect many people. However, if a person consistently finds this challenging, they may wish to contact a mental health professional. Yeah. Peter Pan. Peter Pan is a fictional character created by Scottish novelist and playwright J.M. Barry. A free-spirited and mischievous young boy who can fly and never grows up, Peter Pan spends his never-ending childhood having adventures on the mythical island of Neverland as the leader of the Lost Boys, interacting with fairies, pirates, mermaids, Native Americans, and occasionally ordinary children from the world outside Neverland. Peter Pan has become a cultural icon symbolizing youthful innocence and escapism. In addition to two distinct works by Barry, The Little White Bird, and the West End stage play Peter Pan, or The Boy Who Wouldn't Grow Up, the character has been featured in a variety of media and merchandise, both adapting and expanding on Barry's works. These include the 1924 silent film, 1953 Disney animated film, a 2003 dramatic, live action film, a television series and many other works. Barry commissioned a statue of Peter Pan by the sculptor George Frampton, which was erected overnight in Kensington Gardens on 30 April 1912 as a surprise to the children of London. Six other statues have been cast from the original mold and displayed around the world. In 2002, Peter Pan featured on a series of UK postage stamps issued by the Royal Mail on the centenary of Barry's creation of the character. Origin Peter Pan first appeared as a character in Barry's The Little White Bird, a novel for adults. In chapters 13 to 18, titled, Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens, Peter is a seven-day-old baby and has flown from his nursery to Kensington Gardens in London, 
where the fairies and birds taught him to fly. He is described as, betwixt and between, a boy and a bird. Barry returned to the character of Peter Pan, putting him at the center of his stage play titled Peter Pan, or The Boy Who Wouldn't Grow Up, which premiered on 27 December 1904 at the Duke of York's Theatre in London. Following the success of the 1904 play, Barry's publishers, Hodder and Stoughton, extracted the Peter Pan chapters of The Little White Bird and published them in 1906 under the title Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens, with the addition of illustrations by Arthur Rackham. Barry later adapted and expanded the 1904 play's storyline as a novel, which was published in 1911 as Peter and Wendy. J. M. Barry may have based the character of Peter Pan on his older brother, David, who died in an ice skating accident the day before his 14th birthday. His mother and brother thought of him as forever a boy. Physical appearance. Barry never described Peter's appearance in detail, even in his novel, leaving it to the imagination of the reader and the interpretation of anyone adapting the character. In the play, Peter's outfit is made of autumn leaves and cobwebs. His name and playing the flute or pipes suggest the Greek god and mythological character Pan. Barry mentions in Peter and Wendy that Peter Pan still had all his first teeth. He describes him as a lovely boy, clad in skeleton leaves and the juices that ooze out of trees. Traditionally, the character has been played on stage by a petite adult woman. In the original productions in the UK, Peter Pan's costume was a reddish tunic and dark green tights, such as that worn by Nina Busico in 1904. This costume is exhibited at Barry's birthplace. The similar costume worn by Pauline Chase is displayed in the Museum of London. Early editions of adaptations of the story also depict a red costume but a green costume becomes more usual from the 1920s, and more so later after the release of Disney's animated movie. In the Disney films, Peter wears an outfit that consists of a short-sleeved green tunic and tights apparently made of cloth, and a cap with a red feather in it. He has pointed elf-like ears, brown eyes, and reddish hair. In Hook, the character is played as an adult by Robin Williams with blue eyes and dark brown hair. In flashbacks to him in his youth, his hair is light brown. His ears appear pointed only when he is Peter Pan, not as Peter Banning. His Pan attire resembles the Disney outfit. In the live-action 2003 Peter Pan film, he is portrayed by Jeremy Sumter, with blonde hair, green eyes, bare feet and a costume made of leaves and vines. In the prequel to the main story 2015 Pan film, he is portrayed by Levi Miller, a young boy who was left as a baby by the orphanage until he gets captured by Blackbeard's pirates and taken to Neverland. Here he wears just simple clothes. Age. In The Little White Bird and Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens, he is seven days old. Although his age is not stated in Barry's play or novel, the novel mentions that he still had all his baby teeth. In other ways, the character appears to be about 12 to 13 years old. Personality. Peter is an exaggerated stereotype of a boastful and careless boy. He claims greatness, even when such claims are questionable. In the play and book, Peter symbolizes the selfishness of childhood, and is portrayed as being forgetful and self-centered. Peter has a nonchalant, devil-may-care attitude, and is fearlessly cocky when it comes to putting himself in danger. Barry writes that when Peter thought he was going to die on Marooner's Rock, he felt scared, yet he felt only one shudder. With this blithe attitude, he says, to die will be an awfully big adventure. In the play, the unseen and unnamed narrator ponders what might have been if Peter had stayed with Wendy, so that his cry might have become, to live would be an awfully big adventure, but he can never quite get the hang of it. Abilities. Peter's archetypal quality is his unending youth. In Peter and Wendy, it is explained that Peter must forget his own adventures and what he learns about the world in order to stay childlike. Peter's ability to fly is explained, but inconsistently. In The Little White Bird, he is able to fly because he is said to be part bird, like all babies. In the play and novel, he teaches the darling children to fly using a combination of lovely wonderful thoughts and fairy dust. In Barry's dedication to the play Peter Pan, the boy who wouldn't grow up, the author attributes the idea of fairy dust being necessary for flight to practical needs. After the first production I had to add something to the play at the request of parents about no one being able to fly until the fairy dust had been blown on him. So many children having gone home and tried it from their beds and needed surgical attention. 
J. M. Barry. Peter has an effect on the whole of Neverland and its inhabitants when he is there. Barry states that although Neverland appears different to every child, the island wakes up when Peter returns from his trip to London. In the chapter, The Mermaid's Lagoon, in the book Peter and Wendy, Barry writes that there is almost nothing that Peter cannot do. He is a skilled swordsman, rivaling even Captain Hook, whose hand he cut off in a duel. He has remarkably keen vision and hearing. He is skilled in mimicry, copying the voice of Hook and the ticking of the clock in the crocodile. Peter has the ability to imagine things into existence and he is able to feel danger when it is near. In Peter and Wendy, Barry states that the Peter Pan legend Mrs. Darling heard as a child was that when children died, he accompanied them part of the way to their destination so they would not be frightened. In the original play, Peter states that no one must ever touch him. The stage directions specify that no one does so throughout the play. Wendy approaches Peter to give him a kiss, but is prevented by Tinker Bell. However, John Caird and Trevor Nunn's introduction to the script for the 1997 Royal National Theatre production states that this was never Barry's original intention and was only added for a production in 1927, where Jean Forbes Robertson took the title role and played the part with a lighter, more fairy-like physicality. Robertson was to play the part almost every year until 1939. Cultural Illusions The character's name comes from two sources. Peter Llewellyn Davies, one of the five Llewellyn Davies boys who inspired the story, and Pan, a minor deity of Greek mythology who plays pipes to nymphs and is part human and part goat. This is referenced in Barry's works where Peter Pan plays pipes to the fairies and rides a goat. The god Pan represents nature or man's natural state in contrast to civilization and the effects of upbringing on human behavior, and he experienced a significant revival of interest among English artists, poets and novelists during the Edwardian period. Peter Pan is a free spirit, being too young to be burdened with the effects of education or to have an adult appreciation of moral responsibility. As a betwixt and between, who can fly and speak the language of fairies and birds, Peter is part animal and part human. According to psychologist Rosalind Ridley, by comparing Peter's behavior to adults and to other animals, Barry raises many post-Darwinian questions about the origins of human nature and behavior. As the boy who wouldn't grow up, Peter exhibits many aspects of the stages of cognitive development seen in children and can be regarded as Barry's memory of himself as a child, being both charmingly childlike and childishly solipsistic. Relationships Family Peter Pan ran away from his parents when he was a baby as told in Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens and Peter and Wendy. Finding the window closed and seeing a new baby boy in the house when he returned some time later, he believed his parents no longer wanted him and never came back. This younger sibling is referred to in the chapter, Lockout Time, in Peter Pan and Kensington Gardens but is not mentioned again. Friends Mamie Mannering While in Kensington Gardens, Peter meets a lost girl named Mamie Mannering and the two quickly become friends. Peter proposes marriage to Mamie. While Mamie wants to stay in the gardens with Peter, she comes to realize that her mother is so worried that she must return to her. Mamie promises to always remember Peter and goes back to her mother. When Mamie grows up, she continues to think of Peter, dedicating presents and letters to him. To remember Mamie, Peter rides the imaginary goat that Mamie created for him. She is considered to be the literary predecessor of Wendy Darling. The Darlings Wendy Darling It is hinted that Wendy may have romantic feelings for Peter, but unrequited because of his inability to love. In the original novel, Peter later befriends Wendy's daughter Jane, and it is implied that this pattern will go on forever. From time to time Peter visits the real world, and befriends children. Wendy Darling, whom he recruited to be his mother, is the most significant of them. He also brings her brothers John and Michael to Neverland at her request. It is mentioned that Wendy was the only girl who captured his attention. Relationship in other media In the 1991 film Hook, an older Wendy implies that she used to have feelings for Peter, saying that she was shocked that he did not prevent her wedding day. In the 2002 sequel to the 1953 Disney film, Return to Neverland, Peter and a grown-up Wendy are briefly, but happily, reunited after many years and continue to show feelings for each other. In the 2003 film Peter Pan, the feeling is mutual. 
Captain Hook can only take away Peter's ability to fly by thoughts of Wendy leaving him, growing up, and replacing him with a husband. Wendy saves Peter by giving him her hidden kiss which gives him the will to live, signifying she is his true love. John Darling and Michael Darling John is Wendy's younger brother. He is fascinated with piracy and imitates Captain Hook while playing at home with his siblings. He is also courageous and smart. Michael, the youngest of the Darlings, is convinced that Peter Pan is a real person after hearing Wendy's vivid narratives about him. During nursery games, it is Michael who plays the role of Peter Pan. Peter Pan in Scarlet reveals that Michael died in World War I. Mary and George Darling The parents of Wendy, John and Michael. Mr. Darling works as a clerk in the city, and is named after George Llewellyn Davies. Mrs. Darling is named after Mary Ansel, Barry's wife. Neverland Inhabitants Tiger Lily Tiger Lily is the daughter of Great Big Little Panther, the chief of the Native American tribe resident in Neverland. Barry refers to her as, a princess in her own right, and she is often described as such. She is kidnapped by the pirates and left to die on Marooner's Rock but is rescued by Peter. It is hinted later that she may have romantic feelings for Peter but he does not return them, as he is completely oblivious to other people's feelings. In the Disney film, Tiger Lily shows her gratitude by performing a dance for Peter and kissing him. The kiss makes him turn bright red and makes Wendy jealous of Tiger Lily. Tinker Bell Tinker Bell is a common fairy who is Peter Pan's best friend and is often jealously protective of him. He nicknames her, Tink. She is the friend who helps him in his escapades. Tink's malicious actions are usually caused by her jealousy. These lead to the lost boys shooting arrows at Wendy, and eventually revealing Peter's hideout to Captain Hook, in the hope that Wendy will be captured rather than Peter. When Tink realizes her serious mistake, she risks her own life by drinking the poison Hook has left for Peter. Her extreme loyalty and dedication to Peter are everlasting. The Lost Boys Peter is the leader of the Lost Boys, which include Tootles, Nibs, Slightly, Curly, and the Twins. The Lost Boys is a band of boys who were lost by their parents after they fall out of their perambulators and came to live in Neverland. In Barry's novel Peter and Wendy, it is stated that Peter thins them out when they start to grow up. This is never fully explained but it is implied that he either kills them or banishes them. In the song, I Won't Grow Up, from the 1954 musical, the boys sing, I will stay a boy forever, to which Peter replies, and be banished if I don't. In Peter Pan and Scarlet, the official sequel to Barry's Peter and Wendy, what happens to the lost boys when they begin to grow up is revealed when slightly starts to grow older, as Peter banishes him to Nowhereland the home of all the long-lost boys whom Peter has banished in times past. The Crocodile The Crocodile is Captain Hook's nemesis. After Peter Pan cut off Captain Hook's hand in a fight and threw it into the sea, the Crocodile swallowed it and got a taste for Hook, so it now seeks to consume him whole. It also swallowed a ticking clock, which alerts Hook of its presence. Adversaries Captain Hook Captain Hook whose right hand was cut off in a duel, is Peter Pan's archenemy who leads a large group of pirates. Hook's crew, including Smee and Starkey, also consider him a foe. Captain Hook's two principal fears are the sight of his own blood and one saltwater crocodile. His name plays on the iron hook that replaced his hand cut off by Peter Pan and eaten by the aforementioned crocodile, which continues to pursue Hook. Mr. Smee Mr. Smee is Captain Hook's bosun and right-hand man in J.M. Barry's play Peter Pan and the novel Peter and Wendy. Mr. Smee is Captain Hook's direct confidant. Unlike the other pirates, Smee is often clumsy and incapable of capturing any of the lost boys. Rather than engaging in Hook's evil schemes, Smee finds excitement in bagging loot and treasures. Original Works Peter Pan, or The Boy Who Wouldn't Grow Up a play in which Peter brings Wendy and her brothers to Neverland, where he has a showdown with his nemesis, Captain Hook. Barry adapted this play as a novel. Numerous variations and other adaptations have been produced in various media. Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens, an origin story wherein the infant Peter flies away from his home, takes up residence in Kensington Gardens, and befriends the fairies. It is a book within a book that was first published in Barry's The Little White Bird. When Wendy grew up, an afterthought, 
Barry's sequel play. Peter and Wendy, a novel Barry adapted from the 1904 play, later republished as Peter Pan and Wendy. It also incorporates events of Barry's sequel play, When Wendy Grew Up, an afterthought. Popular culture. Motion pictures and television. Peter Pan appeared for the first time on screen in the 1924 American silent adventure film Peter Pan released by Paramount Pictures as an adaptation of the original stage play. Since their 1953 animated film, Disney has continued to use Peter Pan as a character, like the sequel film Return to Neverland, or in the Disney parks as a meetable character based in Fantasyland, and as the protagonist of The Dark Ride, Peter Pan's flight also located in Fantasyland within most parks. He also appears in House of Mouse, Mickey's Magical Christmas, and the Kingdom Hearts video games. An older and much darker interpretation of this Peter Pan appears in the Chip and Dale, Rescue Rangers film adaptation appearing as the main antagonist, voiced by Will Arnett. In 1991, Robin Williams portrayed Peter Pan in the live-action film Hook, directed by Steven Spielberg, also starring Dustin Hoffman as Captain Hook and Julia Roberts as Tinkerbell. In 2003, Jeremy Sumpter portrayed Peter in the live-action film directed by P.J. Hogan. In 2012, Les Nouvelles Aventure de Peter Pan, are a French animation and France 3 Inches product by DQ Entertainment and Method Animation. In 2015, Pan is a live action origin movie starring Hugh Jackman. In 2023, Disney released Peter Pan and Wendy, a live action film. Manga, anime, games, and comics. In the early 1930s, Edward Mason Eggleston painted a series of images for calendars that included Peter Pan. Native American princesses and pirates. J.R.R. Tolkien's biographer Humphrey Carpenter has speculated that Tolkien's impressions of a 1910 production of Barry's Peter Pan and Birmingham may have had a little to do with his original conception of the elves of Middle Earth. He appears in the Italian comic series Martin Mystere. Japanese manga artist Mayu Sakai appropriated the English term for her series Peter Pan Syndrome. Game author Diana Gita developed a Dungeons & Dragons campaign setting named Neverland, the impossible island that allows players to interact with Peter Pan in an environment based on Peter and Wendy by J.M. Barry. Fiction writer Jonathan Green published a role-playing gamebook titled Neverland, Here Be Monsters, in which Peter Pan appears as a playable character. This version's background story attributes his flight ability and eternal youth to cybernetic implants installed by his genius father after Peter was severely injured by one of the dinosaurs roaming Neverland. Music. Canadian singer-songwriter Ruth B. released the piano ballad, Lost Boy, in 2015, featuring Peter Pan and Neverland, and inspired by the character's appearance in Once Upon a Time. Italian songwriter Eduardo Bonato released a concept album, Sono Solo Canzonet, in 1980 based on Peter Pan and other characters created by Barry. Norwegian-Swedish singer Annie Frid Lingsted recorded the song, Peter Pan, by Benny Anderson and Bjorn Ulvaeus in 1969. Swiss singer Paola Del Medico performed a song themed on the Peter Pan tale in 1982. Pop rock musicians The Jonas Brothers song, Fly With Me, makes direct references to Peter Pan and Wendy in the lyrics. Country singer-songwriter Kelsey Ballerini released a top-charting country single and song titled, Peter Pan, in 2016. South Korean boy band BTS released a music video called, Adult Child. The song makes reference to the Peter Pan story. British musician Kate Bush included her song, In Search of Peter Pan, on her second album Lionheart. Korean boy band EXO released a track called, Peter Pan, on both the Mandarin and Korean versions of the album XOXO. Serbian and Yugoslav rock band Peter Pan was named after the character. Peter Pan is the former name for an Indonesian pop rock band, now called Noah. The 11th track of singer-songwriter Troy Sivan's debut studio album Blue Neighborhood is titled, Lost Boy, inspired by Peter Pan. Enchants the rapper's song, Same Drugs, featured in the album Coloring Book, he makes multiple references to Peter Pan and Wendy, another major character in the novel. Taylor Swift's single, Cardigan, includes multiple references to the Peter Pan story. Blues, psychedelic rock band Kula Shaker included the track, Peter Pan Rip, 
featured in their fourth album Pilgrim's Progress. Italian singer-songwriter Ultimo named his second album Peter Pan. It contains the song, Peter Pan, meaning, Will You Fly With Me? Other uses in popular culture. The name Peter Pan has been adopted for various purposes over the years. Several businesses have adopted the name, including Peter Pan Bus Lines, Peter Pan Peanut Butter, Peter Pan Records, and Peter Pan Seafoods. Three thoroughbred racehorses have been given the name. The first, Peter Pan I, was born in 1904. In the early 1960s, some Cuban families sent their children to resettle in Miami in an emergency effort calculated to save the children from perceived potential mistreatment under the Castro socialist regime. The program was called Operation Peter Pan. American psychologist Dr. Dan Kiley popularized the Peter Pan syndrome in his book The Peter Pan Syndrome, Men Who Have Never Grown Up. He described individuals with underdeveloped maturity. His next book, The Wendy Dilemma, advises women romantically involved with Peter Pan's How to Improve Their Relationships. Public Sculptures Barry commissioned a statue of Peter Pan by the sculptor George Frampton, which was erected overnight in Kensington Gardens on 30 April 1912 as a May Day surprise to the children of London. Seven statues have been cast from the original mold. The other six are located in Egmont Park, Brussels, Belgium, 1924. Bowring Park, St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada, 1925. Johnson Park, Camden, New Jersey, United States, 1926. Queen's Gardens, Perth, Western Australia, 1927. Sefton Park, Liverpool, England, 1928. Glen Gould Park, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, 1929. Other statues are. In 1925, the Town Council of Melbourne, Australia, commissioned a statue of Peter Pan by Paul Montfort. It is now located in Melbourne Zoo. In 1928, Charles Andrew Hafner created a bronze statue for a fountain in the lobby of the old Paramount Theatre in Times Square, but it is now situated in Carl Schurz Park, New York. In 1949, a statue of Peter Pan by Alex Proudfoot RSA, principal of Glasgow School of Art, was erected at the Mernskirk Hospital for Children in Glasgow, commissioned by Alfred Ellsworth in memory of his friend Dr. John A. Wilson, first superintendent of Mernskirk Hospital. Wilson had also been a school friend of J. M. Barry's. A statue by Ivan Mitford Barberton was commissioned by Vivian and Gwen Watson in remembrance of their son Peter and given in 1959 to the Red Cross War Memorial Children's Hospital in Western Cape, South Africa. A pair of statues by Cecil Thomas, one showing Peter Pan and Tinker Bell, and the other Wendy and the Darling Children, have been located in Dunedin Botanic Gardens in Dunedin, New Zealand since the 1960s. Two bronze casts of a statue by Alistair Smart originally commissioned by the Angus Milling Company in 1972, are in Currymuir, Scotland, one in the main town square and the other in the Peter Pan Garden by Barry's Birthplace, now owned by the National Trust of Scotland. In 1976, Ronald Thomason sculpted a bronze statue in front of the Weatherford, Texas Public Library honoring Weatherford native Mary Martin, who had portrayed Peter Pan in the 1954 Broadway musical production and several subsequent telecasts. A bronze statue by Dearmood Byron O'Connor was commissioned by Great Ormond Street Hospital in London and unveiled in 2000, showing Peter blowing fairy dust, with Tinker Bell added in 2005.